Hey, Wyatt, you remember when I asked you if it was a requirement to have a beard at Pew Pew Tactical? Yeah, we added that to the employee handbook. So then it's still a requirement, right? It's in the employee handbook. Hey everyone, it's Sean and Wyatt with Pew Pew Tactical. Today we are covering the best hammer-fired pistols. Ooh, there's a lovely lineup of ladies. Hey, we're going to get into this review in just a second, but before we do, we want to ask your help with something. Go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Let YouTube know that you like our content. And in exchange, we'll provide you with this cringy gun meme. Oh! <laughs> We're going to give you a little bit of an overview of what we're trying to accomplish here. But we're basically talking about the best hammer-fired pistols. Now, we came up with this list uh, between Wyatt and me, and we think that these are going to be some of the best offerings. Now, within that, we're not saying one specific gun, but we've got a few different classes, categories of guns that are going to give you guys some options if you're really looking at finding that right hammer-fired gun for you. Now, why, why would someone pick a hammer-fired gun over a striker-fired? I mean, first things first, you got to look at the triggers, man. The trigger on the hammer-fired guns usually are going to beat out a lot of those striker-fired offerings, especially when you're talking about the single-action trigger pull. You have guns like the 1911 that are just legendary for their triggers, right. you know. Guns like the Shadow 2 and things like that, just absolutely outstanding, hard to beat. Some of them have that double strike capability. You know, if you've got a primer that's a little bit tough, it won't go off on the first one. If you've got a double action hammer gun, bam, you can pop it again, you know, so you're not dead in the water. You don't have to do the tap rack bang. At the end of the day, for me, something about them, they're sweet. You know? No, I definitely dig them. And I think going back to the trigger, one of the best aspects out of that is a good trigger can improve your overall accuracy. A hundred percent. You put a lot of those new shooters on some of these guns that have really good triggers, and you're just taking some of the error out of it, you know. And, <laughs> and at the end of the day, it makes it more fun. Yeah. Oh, no, it's shooting low and left. First up on the list is gonna be the CZ75 series. Now, I really think that these are good quality guns and I've been firing a few of them recently with reviews and have really enjoyed uh, the absolute quality that they bring to the table. Why, what are some of the reasons that we put the uh, CZ75 on the list? Like you said, they're great guns. Next to 1911, this is the second most copied handgun in the world, I believe. They've been out since 1975, shocker with the name. <laughs> but things like the slide in frame design, just really keep the reciprocating mass low, the bore yep. axis is low, the ergonomics are outstanding, they have really good triggers, they just shoot so flat and they feel so good in the hand, the reliability is there, they're favored by competition shooters, people who want to carry them for you know, concealed carry, self-defense, home defense, kind of fits every build. I have my Cajunized PCR right here, that was my primary carry gun for a long time, it's still in my carry rotation and man that thing hangs with stuff like my Staccato C2. They're just outstanding pistols. Wyatt, what are the other two models that we have here? So right here, we got the Shadow 2. This is your out of the box competition ready gun. Uh, they now make it with optics ready slides. This yep. one's the older iron sight only one. This is really popular with USPSA shooters, other competitive shooters, man, just really great trigger. You know, a lot of mass on it really keeps the recoil low. And then we have the CZ SP01. This is kind of like the tactical version of your base CZ75. You got your accessory rail, a little bit uh, nicer trigger, some different sights. So this is kind of the middle ground between your base CZ75 and something like the Shadow 2. Awesome. Next up, we got the Staccato 2011 series. These are some sweet shooters and they're gaining a lot of popularity really quick. Sean, tell us why. Oh man. So Staccato came out with the 2011s, um, started out as STI uh, quite a while back and they were really catering to the competition market, but they slowly evolved to lean more toward law enforcement. And some of the things that they accomplished with their 2011 models is taking the 1911 and improving it for modern use. Now, the 1911 is a great platform, but it had some failings. We'll get into those a little bit later. So you've got the P, which is a full-size model that has become very popular with a lot of law enforcement agencies. It's over 700 agencies that are using uh, this gun right now. You've also got the CS, which is their newest concealed carry version. And then finally, we have the C2, which is one of their original smaller sizes that still offers great performance. Oh man, we got the Beretta 92 series here. Now I'm smiling because I had to carry one of these as a young deputy and mine was clapped out. So I had some issues, but I have fired several other models since then and they've been really great. Yeah, it's really hard to not include the Beretta 92 M9 series on the list. All of the military service it's had and police service all over the world. Like you mentioned, 
over high round counts, you know, some people have seen some issues with the locking sure. blocks combined with some sketchy ammo. You can have some problems when you're looking at, you know, extreme guns that have been in armories for, you know, 20, 30 years and right. shot a million times. Or just not maintained. Or, or both. <laughs> <laughs> but these are really great guns. I mean, they're known to be really soft shooters. They have the 180 degree ejection port uh, reliability. You know, when well maintained is just really good. Got that classic look. I mean, it's unmistakable. You see it, you know, from a million years away. So many John Woo movies, sure. everything they're in there. The accuracy with this type of barrel lockup is just great. There's a large aftermarket. And you got a bunch of different types of models. You have anything from your regular, this is a 92 compact. You know, you got your standard M9, like mm -hmm. the military issue one, all the way up to things like the Breda 92X performance to have. And, absolutely outstanding trigger they changed the ergonomics to the sort of 1911 style vertex grip there adjustable sights you know they got a little bit of something for everybody there when you're looking at the berettas and they're just really good shooters they've been around for a while and they're going to be around for a while yeah absolutely right up next is going to be the hk usp now why how does hk justify the expense of these pistols so if i'm going to answer that in one word for the usp it's going to be reliability there's a reason that this gun was supposed to be replaced twice, first with their P2000 and then with their P30, but it's still being made. You just can't kill them. Yeah. There's just no way. These guns are so overbuilt from the factory. This is a 45 ACP model that you can fire 45 plus P, no problem with it. And some people even fire 45 Super completely unmodified, wow. no recoil spring changes. This is a true to hell and back gun. Like, you know, every time you pull the trigger, it's going to go off. It's just going to run no matter how hostile the conditions are. But it still has some features that I think even today kind of hold up. Um, it takes a little bit getting used to, but you got the ambi yep. uh, paddle release there. Right. I didn't like it at first. I grew to love it over time. This one also has a combination safety decocker lever. It does both. You actually still don't see that a lot on guns today. Yep. So it's kind of nice. You can carry it cocked and locked. You know, you can just carry it in double action, lefty friendly. Mm -hmm. You know, you can swap the safety over to the other side. This gun was really ahead of its time, especially considering it came out in the early 90s. And like I said, it's got the best ergonomics. No, it's kind of blocky. Is it overpriced? Is it a little bit older? Yeah, but is it gonna run? No questions asked. There you go. Oh man, we've got the SIG P22 series. Gonna include a number of different varieties uh, in this series here. And I'll start off with the SIG P226. Now, I got interested in that because I heard the Navy SEALs were using them. And that led me to the Legion model, which, you know, is a little bit nicer version of that. And man, I got one in after I requested it for a review. I tested it out and holy cow, that is a great gun. What about you, Wyatt? How did you get into these? Yeah, I was not really big into the SIGs for a long time. Uh, I was like, every time I pick them up, the grip is just a little too bulky. The bore axis is too high. I wasn't big on it, but like you, I dipped my toes in with the Legion, this P229 Legion right here. A couple nicer features. The trigger is great. I shot it phenomenally. And then like you said, the Navy SEALs kind of drew me in. I got that Mark 25 over here. Got the little sweet anchor on there. Yep. And I was shooting that, and it's really just a regular P226. And I was like, hey, man, this is just a really good gun. Nothing about it 100% stood out, but I was like, I know these are reliable. They've been in service with special forces and military police everywhere. And I just kind of went from there, you know, even their 45 models like the P220 and the P227, they just run and they shoot well. It's, I, I really can't put my finger on it to be honest, yeah. but something about it just works out. Yeah, great ergonomics, really good accuracy. And with that hammer, you know, really good triggers on there too. And all of these have great sights on them too. So uh, just an overall really good package. Want to see more? A la peanut butter sandwiches. Head over to pewpewtackle.com for the full review. Now we've got an honorable mention elected here and that's going to be the 1911, the venerable gun that won two world wars. <laughs> Now, I am happy to report that I actually carried this pistol as a young lieutenant to the sheriff's office for many years. And when I moved to a separate agency, that agency had to shoot indoors so with frangible ammunition and I had constant problems with feeding. Uh, the Timber Warrior is a great pistol, very accurate, very reliable with the right ammo. And um, that's why I selected it for so long as I did. But when I was forced into that situation, I couldn't rely on it anymore. So. I had to make a different choice. Why, what are some of the reasons why we would include the 1911 on this list? Like you said, man, two world wars. I mean, you could stop there, but 
you know, really, you just got stuff like the grip angle. So many guns are mimicking the grip angle. They're going with it now. Things yep. like the Breda that we showed with that Vertec. It was just designed so well in the first place. And the triggers, you just can't beat them. It's got that straight back trigger. Yep. Honestly, there's no way to beat a 1911 trigger, except for improving that on something like a 2011 and polishing it up. Right, so you have five inch, you've got that great trigger, the barrel, all of those things combined to make a really nice, accurate pistol. 45, man, that's, uh, that's a heck of a round. Yeah, I love the 45, but I mean, I have some 1911s and nine millimeter. I got one in 38 Super. That's for the real connoisseurs out there. <laughs> and they're just really good platforms. You can adapt them to a lot. Man, I got small ones from Officer Frame, yep. Commander Frame, all the way up to the five inch. You can even get some badass long slide ones and 10 millimeter oh, yeah. six inch guns, you know, for hunting, things like that. And uh, they're still around for had a really good reason there's awesome guns and you can get sure. them for really cheap too yeah so we've got a couple of expensive examples here <laughs> right we've got a wilson combat and we've got the kember but we just recently took a look at a tesa uh, 1911 that uh was 350 bucks yeah those come right at 350 bucks you got stuff like the rock island guns at 500 dollars. Mm -hmm. i have a couple of american classics like you said you can get good reliable 1911s all the way from 350 bucks up to 3500 dollars, and even more if you want some made out of asteroids looking at you cabot <laughs> hey everyone we're about to wrap this up but before we do i want to ask you for a favor please hit that like and subscribe button thank you oh man we have had a lot of fun today shooting all of these different guns we want to let you know that this was our list we came up with this together and these are some of the options that we thought are going to be the best ones for this category you may not agree with that or maybe you do head down to the comments section and let us know what you think now Wyatt, what are some of the reasons again why we picked these different guns to have them in this list. I mean, you got a little bit of everything. You know, you got reliability with the USB. Yep. You got ergonomics with the CZ. You got the great trigger with the 1911. You got the Breda 92, which is a soft shooter. You got the Staccato, which is a fast shooter. And then you got the SIGs over here, which is kind of a little bit of everything, you yeah. know, a little bit of a do-all. So something to kind of touch on everything. They all have their strengths. They all have their weaknesses too. Sure. But, uh, you know, this is kind of casting a wide net, trying to get a little bit of everything out there. So. Yeah, and speaking of a wide net, we realize that a lot of these examples that we have here on the table are relatively expensive. But, again, there are less expensive versions of these guns that are out there that are still available. I think this is a pretty compelling list. I love it, man. I wouldn't put it together if I didn't think so. <laughs> All right, that's going to do it for us, guys. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.